of just new, new wave innovative thinkers that's willing to kind of push with some of the with some of the people that's more seasoned that's been there for a while don't really have the comfortability or support to push. Because some people would, they just don't have the support. And so that's what's really comfortable and that's what we trust. We trust the individuals really that we're working with. And we can only trust them and their ability and their power so far within this bigger structure that we don't trust. And so the talk about trust is very, very complex and easy. It's just not a straight answer. Um, and it's not saying that anybody is bad. It just, again, it's a lot of historical layers and trauma that we're trying to take, take away. And what's really important, our trust is really going to depend on what happened next. Because this was all great. It, it, we, you know, it was cool and, and rainbows and unicorns together <laughs> between us. But we, like, moving forward in terms of like how much is really caused, we got paid to do the community engagement. But like, are we getting paid to do to 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 to, to, to watch the plan? You know, like afterwards to make sure that these departments that nobody made promises, but I mean, it's in the plan. So. If, you're, if this cross your department and whatnot, like who's making sure that those conversations are still moving forward? And that takes a lot of time and toll on us and capacity to keep bugging certain departments to make sure that they're keeping on what they said that they would do. And so that's that's in there will lie the actual trust. And most of the time that gets broken, and that's the reason why we don't have trust. We, we don't have a just automatic trust with the city, but we are trying to have good faith because the city of Oakland have a real opportunity to be a model of how to do. Um, the, how to do development without displacement um, because it's, it's a lot of potential in our neighborhood. Instead of just moving us over or waiting us out, work with us, help us get the resources that we need, and we can actually help you build a better city than what you can imagine. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, you know, it's um, the whole thing around equity. I, I, I'm an old real estate guy, and I was thinking about equity. I was thinking about, you know, what that portion of the the property is not, not burdened with debt, you know? And, uh, and I said, gee, that's not equal, you know? But um, I think the thing that helped build the trust was that the Oak Dot staff transformed and uh, an altar. They treated us with fairness. We could feel the just, they were trying to be just with, with us. Um, we felt the dignity, we felt like, you know, they were, we, we, we uh, they uplifted us a little bit, you know, and um, um, we felt that uh, that uh, they were giving, you know, they were giving us dignity. And um, but at the same time, as our partners, as, as Peter said, the jury was still a little bit out, even though we know them well, right? we know them really like friends. But the jury's out; they still the city, and we still the CBO. And now we're going to help them implement this plan. And okay, we're going to do our best. We're going to do our now, Sarko Chain, the EOC, the Sprint Bank did a lot of work to help build this plan. And then now the city's got to deliver the goods, meaning that we need the money to help people. And we're going to hold them accountable for that. Mm -hmm. All right, I mean, it's. Just want to add one more sentence. And look, when we talk about trust, just, I want people to look at it holistically, again, not just think about one. Because EOC is, again, we hold many contracts and planning. So I'm, I'm working with the planning department, a liaison from there, too. And again, what, when we have one one miscommunication or debacle, it's just like, oh, I thought we built trust. Like, we're not going to build trust just because we had a good meeting or something like that. Every time we have a good deliverable check does not mean that we build trust. It just means that we got through we, we got through the deliverables, <laughs> you know? And so just want everybody to look at, at it holistically. And look, for the city people, look at your system. I don't feel... I, don't, I can't have a lot of trust with the city because I had a good experience here knowing that the city just approved a race and equity department around the same time as the transportation, but yet in the budget gave it no money. And so that's like under resourced. But we got a race and equity department. Isn't the city of Oakland doing well? They're, they're working with the community. It's like, yeah, but if you really look down to the weeds, stuff or not is not resourced the way it should be. So it sounds good, the language is there, but when it comes to actually providing equity, it's about getting the money more directly to us to do the work, and it's also about re resourcing that department. We got a whole department for raising equity. So for me to have any trust, I need to know that department is fully staffed. We got two people in that department, a, a woman, Darlene Flynn, shout out to you, and, and her staff, and her one person staff. So for me to have trust, I need to see the whole system, you know, doing some work. Oh. Uh, and tell us about from the city. I think in this question about resources and how you work on energy transform to make sure those there. Yes, thank you. So yeah, so with our with our race and equity team, as Peter brought up, we we 
understood that we needed to be more intentional about how we approach this plan and how we were gonna commit to the community partners that we were with. So in, in our budget and our scope of work, we, we really allocated about 40% of that towards towards community outreach in order to ensure that we could have these partners with us in, in a meaningful way and, and pay them for the labor they're doing, which is historically not done. So so we, we were really intentional about making sure that we, we resource that well and to build that trust and, and to make those commitments. And something that I, I, I missed out on my presentation that I should have highlighted is that in the plan, we, we put out a section about like outreach commitments moving forward so that with any any project by project level that we do when it comes to biking and hopefully department wide, we're doing that in the same holistic way that the bike plan was planned out. Um, so those commitments have been put in the plan because as uh, I'm on a team that develops the plan, I, I don't always do the implementation part. So when this moves on to another wheelhouse, I'm committed to make sure that that process is still going through. And as a planner who cares and invested in the community, I, I'm also taking steps to ensure that, you know, the knowledge that I built with and the trust that I built with them, that that continues to transpire with everyone else within our department as long as we move forward. How many, how much resources did it take? The question about how much did you were able to secure? Is that public information at all? <laughs> Sacco changed their stipend to do this work. Right. I mean, this really wasn't a pay payday for us. Um, we got a little over seven thousand dollars for forty thousand dollars worth of work. Yeah. I mean, we were honest about it. We just said, that, "Is that fair, uh, Trent, uh, Vanessa?" <laughs> Thank you. 
they don't have the same community-based groups as in open. For everybody, who wants to give some advice to a city in open?
Well, how do we find them and how do you determine their percentage? Do they maybe based on some census tract or what is the source of the information for? Yeah, so we use the MTC Communities of Concern Census uh, map that they have around where those populations are currently living. Um, we, the city uh, has been trying to refine that to better reflect what that looks for Oakland, but at the moment when the bike plan started, we didn't have that data yet, so we, we based it off of, off of their existing data to get those percentages. Thank you. Um, another question from the public. Um, what aspects of bicycle culture do you think um, we may be unaware of and that we should be taking into account, especially here in the peninsula? Growing up, that would have made the difference for me. 
Um, I seem like an anomaly in, in my family that continues to live on the peninsula only in cars. Um, but it's because they don't have that experience of like what it means to be that pedestrian right there on that street. Um, it's crazy. Like I know my, my mom would have been like, you're crazy to, to walk down that like, come, traffic coming full on. Um, it felt like I was on a highway walking here. The same experience happens when I walk two blocks down from my mom's house in Daly City, um, where there's not a sidewalk, or not a crosswalk to get to the beach, and it's right there. Um, yeah. Thank you. But I just wanted to say something because I come from a city, I was born in Bogota, and I do remember we bike everywhere since I was little. Like that was the only thing we all did, bike. And on Sundays we have Ciclovias, I know San Jose has been a and things like that, which are nice. But I think but part of me being such a cyclist is because I did it from day one. It's like I remember that was what we did to get around, going by bicycles. Um, and when uh, later I was an adult, I saw that one of the mayors, he was doing this advertising and he was going on a bicycle to the city building. And I think that really changed also the fact that it's not it's everybody, including the mayor of a city who can bike to work. And, and that changed, I think culture is built by everybody and decision makers and public officials and business people have that role to play to ensure that this is for everybody across all the communities. I have a question that I think hasn't been, hasn't been uh, mentioned and I think since we have business people, here in private sector. One of the questions I have for you guys is what about private sector? What about developers? What about businesses? Uh, how, what's their role in the plan? I would like to, and, and I'm sure there are various measures. When I read the plan, for example, we want to ensure that people who commute to, to work have showers, bike parking. I wish we all had bike parking every day. <laughs> but what can the business do to help in, in those aspects? So, so there, there isn't a lot of uh, business-focused uh, processes in the plan, but the plan is meant to inform what what new development is going to be like within the city. So, in, in our target goals and, and one of those recommendations, we're we're asking that as new development comes into Oakland, because it is developing and building up quickly, we're asking that they they help us build this infrastructure, add in end of uh, ride facilities such as such as uh, showers or a basic station uh, and bike parking, uh, secure long-term bike parking and also short-term bike parking in order to um, accommodate the needs, not just of that building that's there, but also the uh, surrounding neighborhood and community that's there. So so we don't want to leave like a siloed bike parking in a garage that no one has access to, but we're asking for, for stuff that can be built on the road. and. And in lieu of that, if there's also the CDM, so they can pay into a fund that can help us build up those networks. If it's if if the system is already in place where they're building, but help us build it somewhere else that's lacking, so we can move resources from let's say downtown or North Oakland over to East Oakland or West Oakland to prioritize and rebalance where those resources are. Yeah, just yeah, I would just add uh, that. Um, yeah, I think there was an explicit focus in this plan to focus and provide benefits for long-term Oakland residents. And so maybe bike planning in other places might have a little bit of a different flavor. And so I think as Manuel was saying, it's like how can this plan that's serving long-term Oaklanders um, be implemented by businesses and um, real estate and kind of be a guidebook to help the city have very clear directions to developers around um, the bike infrastructure that they can include as new buildings and developments go in, but I think that that decision maybe to have less of a focus on businesses was around making sure that the right people were in the room. I agree with, with both of you all said. Um, I just want to give background context that for, for me, consultants, not necessarily consultants, but definitely corporations and private yeah, corporations, um, when it comes to the talk about reparations for underserved, disadvantaged, whatever, whoever, whatever you want to label us as. Um, it's not the city, it's not the government. The government just couldn't just allow for the, the, the biased, racist policies that was going on back in the day. But the people that was actually benefited from it, slavery and everything was actual corporations, sharecroppers and people like that. The everyday people that we think was, oh, I didn't play a part in that. So with that said, to me, they have a big role in it. And right now, they get the, the city has kind of what I call like a cop-out 
and it's called the impact fee. So right now, when, when the de developers, development, and hire people come in, they can pay into an impact fee based on a bunch of criteria of the project. They can pay that amount, and then it's like, well, yeah, I'm not causing whatever, I pay the impact fee, and that money, and then that's a problem with an impact fee. That money is not guaranteed to be reinvested back into that actual area that the development came to. It can go somewhere else. And so for the community, that's the only one issue that we're trying to figure out. We need our own, and that's why within the Black Culture Zone, we create a CDC, a Community Development Corporation, where we can actually have our own private fund and not need to always have the city hold our pots of money and, and do business for us. We can do business for ourselves, just like the Asian community and every other community that, that's, that's anchored by a Community Development Corporation that has their own economy. Is a technical question. Buffer pipe length. I think you mentioned that in the presentation, Manuel, and so but they say here that uh, this is a low stress and maybe not appropriate for all ages. Uh, Motion happens with protected planes. Can you upgrade to protected planes faster in open? <laughs> faster. Always faster. 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 I think that's a loaded question. <laughs> so, so we have a commitment to implement bike infrastructure in all our streetscape projects that we have a recommendation on the bike plan for. Um, when it comes to protected bike lanes, the majority of that is concentrated in downtown more than anywhere else. Um, and we've recommended that where it makes sense within this plan. But there's room for adjustment within that. So once we go to project by project label, it's up to that community and that neighborhood to tell us if that's what they really want or if they want something different. Um, so this idea of it being implemented faster is it, not, to me, it's not a, a financial one, but a community buying one. So I, I personally, aside from being my role as a planner, um, think that I, I don't want to implement anything quickly as long as people don't feel strongly that that's what's gonna help them stay in the community and that they're invested in that. Because as we've been talking about, those are signs of gentrification and that they're being built for someone else. And so I, I'm, I'm, that's, yeah. Thank you. Magnus wanted to say something to him. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, in terms of business involvement, one of the things that businesses could do, we're, we're, in, a, we're, in, a, we're in a climate change Era right now, am I correct? Yeah. And, so, and one of the, you know, business have been, some business have, business people have not been as friendly towards bicycling and pedestrian issues as we would like them to be. And it would be great if they would begin to become more advocates for adjusting the climate change and less use of, the, of vehicles like cars. I didn't say get rid of all the cars, I said less use of them. And, um, and more bicycling or walking or, or some of the other, the schools is around now and, and other ways of getting around. So if there could be more advocates for uh, re reduction in use of fossil fuels, that'd be just great. Here. It's not a question, which is kind of good. This is an announcement, and I think it's from some other offender who's in the room. Hey. Uh, it says that um, there is a bike East Bay pedal festival, and the celebration, the, the, the handwritten is so small, and I wear glasses, but it's this handwritten. Maybe you can help us. Anyway, this is this Saturday. At Jack London? Yeah. yeah. Pedal fest by Bike East Bay. Yeah. It's this Saturday, in fact, from yeah. 11 to 5 p.m. Uh, I'll be there uh, tabling. And where's Chris? Is Chris you still here? Stand up, Chris. Chris White from Glass City. He's there. I wanted to let you get by with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I think we are on time. I want to thank this wonderful panel. I think it was been a great uh, start of this uh, bicycle summit. Learning from uh, a city who has done this, who have brought on board community groups in a different way, who engage them and facilitate this dialogue and with a new perspective. I think it's good to hear directly from them. I took away many <coughs> points. Uh, I hope you all do. So please join me in thanking them, clapping very loudly. <laughs>